Welcome back to Iowa Live. We are at one of the most picturesque sites in central Iowa. We are hanging out at Big Creek. How fun is that on a day like today? Kim Bogan Schutz from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. Oh, thank you. It is gorgeous oh, out here this, today. You need to come out. If you have yes. not been out to Big Creek lately, you really need to come out there. But hey, here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about something that is threatening Iowa's lakes, rivers, and streams. What are we talking about? So we are talking about aquatic invasive species, sometimes called aquatic hitchhikers. They are plants and animals, um, clams that can attach onto your boat and spread to other waters. Right now, this is a hard to believe that they can spread the way that they do, but invasive species. Explain what that invasive species means. So invasive species means a species, it's not native to Iowa. Um, and when a sp species such as zebra mussels okay. comes to Iowa that's not from here, they don't have their natural controls and things that keep their populations in check and they just explode. Do we know where zebra mussels came from? We actually do. Zebra mussels came from Europe. Okay. From the Caspian Sea region. And how did they Europe. get way over here? On ships. So big boats um, and actually in the ballast water of ships, which is water that's underneath the ships. They use it to stabilize when they come across the ocean. Um, but when zebra mussels are small, they're microscopic and float in the water. So oh. they were in that water. When they got across through the St. Lawrence River into the Great Lakes, they just dumped their water and dumped the zebra mussels with them. And then from the Great Lakes, Lakes. Uh, make their way through the tributaries. Through and the tributaries, down the Illinois River, into the Mississippi River. And next thing you know, they're here. They are here from California to New York. And without <laughs> the natural predators and natural control for those things, they just have repopulated to extreme. Right. And there's very little that we can do to control things like zebra mussels or the Asian carp that would kill them that wouldn't kill our native species. Mm -hmm. Some of the plants we are better at being able to control but yeah, the animals, it's tough. We can't get rid of them. Okay, now here. let's talk about the Asian carp since you okay. just mentioned that. Yeah. What about those? So the Asian carp, and they were actually purposefully introduced um, to control algae in ponds, okay. in fish farm ponds. But when we get a lot of rain, rivers flood. These these fish farm ponds were down south, Arkansas, Mississippi, and they flooded and the fish just started swimming. And we've got them up in the Mississippi River and the Missouri River and they're swimming into our tributaries as well. Well, so we now have that that we are dealing with. And then we're talking about the plant species uh, that are out there that are really uh, bothersome. Right, right. So we have things like Eurasian water milfoil, um, it's been here since the late 1990s, okay. curly leaf pondweed, brittle naiad, um, and they are the ones that really can get tangled up on your boats and motors, um, and it usually just takes one little piece of a plant to grow into a whole new plant. Just a little sprig. Just a little sprig. Doesn't take seed necessarily, any, any part. And that's why it's so important that if you go boating or you do anything like that, any type of outdoor activity, even if you have animals that are swimming or anything like that, that make sure everything is clean before you leave. Right, right. And same with your bait bucket. You're not, if you went to the bait shop yeah. and bought minnows, may have some invasive species in there that, that came in because most baits naturally harvested. So when you're done with your bait, don't dump it in the lake either. Right. So make sure you're cleaning everything off. Now when we come out to, to Big Creek and we look around and we see some of the plants that are floating, are they all invasive species no, that we see here? No, uh, in, in, luckily nearby? we we okay. do have some native species that are growing. Oh, okay, can we, can we pan down here, Jake, and show you show everybody some of the things here? Now what are we looking at here, Kim? Uh, what are we seeing the majority of here in the middle? So the majority of the plants unfortunately are curly leaf pondweed. Oh really? Yeah, so all of this from here on out to there. Okay, but wait, you know what? <laughs> Instead of being up here on the dock, safely on the dock, let's, let's go down. Yeah, there. let's okay, go let's on go in. We're jump in. How many times have someone told you to go jump in the lake? <laughs> right, and Okay. we're actually gonna jump, we're gonna in, jump in the lake. Or we're gonna like all right. carefully <laughs> jump in the lake. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Okay, so show us this now. What do we have here? So, now, so what is good? First of all, what is good? So this plant in part is a good one. Okay, th this looks like uh, like aquarium plants, if you have tropical fish. Right, yeah. The and, fake and ones that you get, yeah. Right, exactly, and this one's actually called coontail. Okay. So when it's in the water, so this is okay. it's bushy, yep. And th some of these, there are- What are the stringy guys? guys? It's, it's in the pondweed family. Okay. So we have a lot of different native pondweeds, okay. this one and this one. Oh yeah, um, the big so leafed ones here. The big leafed ones, they're all, you know, pondweeds. But these are not- these Potomac are not Eaton. No, these are native species and they're actually good to have because fish and, and insects need the habitat that these things oh, provide. Sure, the, the cover of it and right. things like that. But then we get things like out here, this okay. curly leaf pondweed. Uh, let's find the curly leaf pondweed here. Yeah. 
That's this one That's here. That's this one there. I always say the leaves look like little lasagna look, noodles. Look at that. <laughs> Jay, can you, can you zoom in on that? They look like little lasagna leaves. They really do. Yeah, and see how there's no native species growing underneath this and how it's pushing out? Because they take over? Because this can take over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, let's, let's show a comparison here to some of these other ones uh, that we just had. There's some of the, this, this, the thin ones, the thin, yeah, and the then the big ones, leafy ones. You can right. see the difference here. Right. But I think you're right. The, the leaf structure on this looks like a little piece of lasagna. Right. Yep. And so this is no good. You don't want this You don't anything. want that in, on anything. But what about the other stuff? Do you want to make, make sure none of this is on your boat? Right, exactly. So it's illegal to transport any of it on your boat and equipment because most people can't tell the difference. Did you know the difference? No, no yeah, not right, yeah. down in the lake. <laughs> right, and yeah, and, and saw us. Absolutely, yeah, so. and it only takes a little piece like yep. this, yep. and it could go crazy. Yep. Now, if people want to get more information about this and learn more about why they have to make sure everything is clean to uh, eliminate the invasive species, especially the invertebrates, whatever the case may be, how, where should they go? They should go to our website, iowadnr.gov slash AIS. All right. There you have it, folks. Uh, invasive species, uh, it's not a good thing, but we can control it with everybody's help and courtesy of the Iowa DNR, iowadnr.gov, G-O-V, for more information.